I was visiting a bar, and in he walked. They call him a loner. I know who you are. Really? You kill drug dealers. They call him a miss. You've heard stories of that man that carries a guitar case full of weapons. I hope you don't think you can take someone like Ucho all by yourself. Really? They made the mistake of calling his bluff. Is there something in the guitar case? My guitar? No. It's time to face the music. Hey folks, man, this is Monk, and we are back with another episode of Classes of Cinematics. And I'm joined, as always, my co-host, we got Bobby Blockbuster. Yo, yo, yo! Yeah, today, folks, man, we got a classic banger from 1995, man. And we're going to be talking about Desperado, directed by Robert Rodriguez, man. You know, and this was an interesting time in the cinema world. Mm -hmm. This was like a era where we had a lot of great emerging talents at the time. I just remember always seeing... Tarantino, Robert Rodriguez, um, the likes of uh, I think even um, Hughes Brothers, Wes Anderson popped yeah. up too, man. You know Hughes Brothers, yeah, and it was crazy, man. It was an exciting time for mm -hmm. fans of the cinema, man. Yes, but let's yes. get into this uh, tale from Mexico. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, first things first, dog. Me gusta de carigatada, me gusta que todo el sol, el mariachi me acompaña cuando canto mi canción. Ay, 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 ay. Is that how they go? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, dog, I oh love this God. joke. I didn't know he was going to do I love this. this I love this movie, dog. I love this movie yeah, so this much. Wow. 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 I did yeah. not know I, this was happening. I wanted to tap into my El Babarachi before I got started, you know what I mean? But, um, First things first, to me, this film is in great company. And, and, and saying that, meaning when it comes to sequels, it's in the same likeness for me as Aliens, Terminator 2, Batman Returns, Back to the Future 2. Um, whereas the sequel is just as good, if not better, than the original. You know what I'm saying? El Mariachi was a great film for what it was, but I feel like this one... Um, due to the budgetary inflation and things of that nature, it was able to level up and then, you know, and bring something new to the table. Like this, this is definitely a mainstream film on a bottom dollar budget. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And with the story, it gives more layers. You know what I'm saying? What, what it did was it took, you know, what the, the groundwork that El Mariachi laid down and, and just kind of really enhanced it in such a way to make it all make sense where you know at the end of el mariachi you know he, he rides off into the mm -hmm. sunset on the motorcycle with the dog and you know uh the big bad moco from how how they play it out in this the big bad moco you know he, he kills mariachi's love and shoots him in the hand so he can no longer play guitar anymore and then with this one they set the they set the the bar by saying that moco was the underboss for this guy bucho mm -hmm. who actually is the one who set him up to do these things in the first place so now the mariachi wants to take him out yeah. it's, it's interesting because i think in the first film it's almost like our character um you know it's um a mariachi is like a mistaken identity hmm. he goes through the the ordeal that he goes through and survives and now this one is him getting revenge and getting even trying to make things right you know from that you know original situation man so, absolutely well and and to your point i mean in the first one he was kind of just 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 playing it as it goes whereas this one you can tell the mariachi is full-on vigilante mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying i mean it's like and, and i like it because they set the tone out the gate by, and it's funny because it's the role is played by Steve Buscemi, but in the film, his name is Buscemi. He walks into the bar <laughs> and, you know, he, he goes in and he sets the tone by telling this just just outlandish story of this guy who, he, I mean, he's he's huge in stature, has a, has a guitar case. It just pretty much cleans the whole bar out, you know, and what it does is it builds the mythology of the mariachi. But more than that, what he's doing is it's almost like 
Like he's the 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 pigeon, like in, in like night times that's going to scope of the scene to see if the enemy is there. In the coal mine. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and uh, so so he goes out and he seeks out the, these bars in these certain areas. And then once he mentions the name Bucho, based off the reaction, he can tell if he's either been there or is that where he's residing. Then he reports back to the mariachi. And off their reaction, he's like, oh, he's there. So then he goes back to the mariachi, lets him know, hey, man, this is where you need to start looking. And it's just like, it's mayhem in Mexico yeah, from yeah. there. I mean, he essentially raises, goes, wages a one-man war against this, yes. this this gangster that, that has control of this region, man. Yes. And, um, and it does have some excellent characters, man. Besides our mariachi himself, I mean, it was great that, like, this film, I feel like he could have easily continued the El Mariachi um um, storyline but then it's like all right i'm here i made a bunch of noise from that original film and yep. they gave me a budget yes they gave me access to uh cash and cool they gave me um uh, i could stack this thing and i'm bringing in my homies and and it's just a much better film man you but, get into the um you, you know, know real quickly just speaking on the budget for an action film this was still bottom dollar oh, budget oh, they yeah. only gave him seven mil yeah he's that guy like yes. like that's like one thing I like about him is his um, small film school or something low budget film school mm-hmm. or whatever in in his um, movie extras you get the DVDs and stuff like that and he explains how he's pulling this stuff off. He's a guy if you want to make a something look big with a small budget you get Robert Rodriguez. Yes. you know. But but our mariachi here is cool and calm, played by the the um, the amazing Antonio Banderas. By the yes. time this film comes out. It's interesting because Banderas, he's known for all these mostly dramatic uh, roles. But then when this comes out, he, he jumps him into this action star kind of thing. And he blends in this thing smoothly, man. He's cool. He, he comes off as a guy that doesn't really want problems, but he can handle himself. And when things get heated, it's on, you know. <laughs> what I like it's about great, him, man. too, it's is great. that he's he's... He, he comes off, he tries to portray himself as emotionless, but you can tell he's in tune with his moral compass. He's like, he's a good guy doing bad shit mm-hmm. for a good reason. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that is a vigilante when you break it down. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But then, you know, and, and with him, I mean, he shoulders the load of this film. He does. He runs end zone to end zone with it on his back. But then you also get the flip side of the coin in uh, Jocelyn D. Almeida, who is uh, who's Bucho. Yeah, he's great. For every good, there's a bad. And this dude is bad to the max. Like, he has no moral compass. His he's emotionless. He'll kill his own guys. He'll he'll kill chicks. He'll do whatever he needs to do. He's all for self in every way. And you know, he he portrays himself in such a bad way that it's like you kind of want to see the mariachi take mm-hmm. him out. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? It's like, man, this dude is doing wrong to the whole populace of this area of Mexico that they're yeah. residing in. You know <laughs> yeah, what I'm saying? Like yeah. he's he I mean, he's got people Everybody who's a business owner is a housing spot for him to, to smuggle his drugs through. Everybody that, that crosses him ends up dying. I mean, he's got his hand in every single cookie jar that is provided. You know what I'm saying? Somebody got to take him out. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's great, man. Uh, you also get, um, of course, uh, Summer Hike, um, you know, Plays a great character. Dude, she is dimed out in this dog. Yeah, she yeah. She's, she's is dimed beautiful. out. But, but, but interestingly enough, man, that, that's where this thing is a little weird for me. She's kind of reprising the role of the other woman yeah. in um in El Mariachi, kind yeah. of doing the same thing, but yeah. in repeat. So, so this thing, it, it, even though it is a sequel, there are some beats that are repeated, you know, in this. Yes. And uh, but but she's a welcome addition. But I think. Dusk of Dawn was already out by the time this came out. I so, believe so. Yeah, so so yeah, that's her first um, you know, film debut. So mm-hmm. and she comes into this and actually shows that she can just do more than look good, you know. She, yes. She's acting, you yes. know, really a uh, great character in yes. this film. You know who stood out to me, dog, was Danny Trejo. Mm-hmm. This was this was Long before he was uh, Machete, this was back when he was Young Switchblade, the knife thrower. Kinda, you know what I'm of, saying? It's like it sets the tone for his character, yeah, though. It's kind and, of it's kind of a prelude to that character. Yes, in the yes. Uh, the only thing is his <laughs> eyes got bigger, dog, yeah, 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 yeah. and his hair got longer. Yeah, but yeah. um, for him to have such a predominant role in such a limited amount of time, I mean, my man doesn't speak one word, but he is one of the most memorable characters in this film outside of Benderas. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Anyone who seen this film is like dog you see the dude with the with the chick tattooed on his chest and throwing the knife taking everybody out Mm -hmm. treo did his thing and um that was i remember when the first time i saw this i he had the same impact on me you know what i mean i was just like yeah Yeah. that dude is badass to the core he's that memorable 
um, henchman. It's like um, he's got like a uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, you know, he's a specialty guy. You know, he's yes. like a boss. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're playing Double Dragon, you got the regular guys you beat up, and then yes. you get to a boss. And, he and would what's, be, what's cool he about his character boss. too is that he comes in going rogue. Like he is not one of Bucho's henchmen. He actually, whoever is above Bucho, sent him in mm. to you know clean up the mess that Bucho yeah. is not cleaning up or capable of cleaning up himself. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. that that's that's really cool as well. Yeah. Also, like um um. What we get from Cheech Marin, he's, he's a cool guy. Uh, him and Steve Buscemi are great um, yeah. char- their characters in this film, especially Buscemi setting the tone, as you said in the beginning. And then you got uh, Cheech Marin, who's this bartender, who's in this thing a bit. He's kind of, <laughs> but, but in, in a way, he, he's scummy. And, and you know that he's this guy, his bar is... It's the bad guy bar. They, you know, they tolerate him. He's kind of in the mix. He trades information for them. He's the gossip guy and all this and that. But but he's funny, man. He has a little bit more flavor to this, man. Especially the scene, um, you know, where we get um, Tarantino pops in and, Dude, and these other guys. It's I love, amazing I stuff, love Quentin Tarantino's spot check in here. I've seen this movie, God, over, over 30 times. Easy. Mm-hmm. And every time he tells the piss joke about the guy trying to pee in, <laughs> yeah. the, in the cup. I mean, it's, it's hilarious to me because it's told in such a way. Way that I, I can't help but to think that Tarantino wrote that joke himself. Possibly, it's, it's I think told so, man. in, in I, I such could, a way. It's so Tarantino esque. Yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah, I, I can see these guys teaming up on this. Maybe an uncredited, you know, contribution. Yeah. And, and like, it, I mean, essentially, they wrote um, Dust of Dawn together. Yeah, man, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so, so it's kind of a interesting thing. Like I said, these guys, they were both coming up at the same time. Both yes. indie roots in in the film game. Both really heavy, deep film fans. So so it, it's, it's, it makes sense that they would have a relationship, you know. And it's cool, too, that Robert Rodriguez, he has cameos from a lot of people that were in the original El Mariachi mm-hmm. film. Even yeah, yeah. The, the lead role reprises his role um, as one of uh, the now Banderas Mariachis, uh, one of his homeboys, uh, Campa, the mm-hmm. guy who shoots the two yeah, yeah. fully automatic <laughs> guitar cases. Yeah, yeah. So that's really that's cool. cool um, but you know, another thing that I thought was cool, the, the dude, uh, Tito Lavara, he plays Tavo, who is mm-hmm. uh, Cheech Moran, his homeboy. He actually is in a band that he's the lead singer in a band called Tito and the Tarantula, right? Mm. And he's the one who sings the song. Um, what's the what's the dang song called? Strange Face of Love, the song that's playing during the whole bar fight. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's his song and stuff. And um, and then ultimately when you know he gets his head blown off by two guns, not just one. And you know, saying that to say this, like the music in this movie i mean it's playing non-stop almost like the same way what we got in like mm-hmm. the transformers movie or gi joe or or almost pulp fiction even i mean there's a there is a consistent soundtrack that is carrying the tone the music like i said it's a character in itself it really brings this film yeah. to life it yeah. gives it a heartbeat like that, a man. pulse mm-hmm. and it enhances not only the action scenes but just the flow of the way that the story is being delivered yeah it, it, this film like it doesn't hit me as realism. It feels as if someone's retelling a fantastical story. Yes. It, it's the way the music is used, some of the imagery, even even some of the stuff with the dialogue and, and the Jimmy scene. You yes. know, in the beginning, and it, it, it's it's cool, man. It's a lot of um, you know, it's, it's almost like a hyper real. Like even some of the fighting, man. Like like that shootout in the bar, man, where oh. it gets crazy. <laughs> like like all right, we're gonna get into the action of this thing, yes. man. Because um, yes, that's what waiting. stands out to this film, man. Yes. Because I think El Mariachi introduced that. Yes. To his game, and you watch El Mariachi. There's a lot of hard boiled and, and the killer uh, baked into that film, man. Yes, and, and, definitely. At the core, and the way Rodriguez portrays his gun violence, man, it, it's, it's amazing, man. It's almost like you know imitating John Woo's ballet of bullets, so they call it at that time. But but yeah. but he has his own touch to it, his own grit, and and I think it's also cool having this set in Mexico. So it's almost all a Western vibe, like a neo. Yes western vibe like like it's, it's crazy what he's able to and, achieve with this man and like, almost and, and i mean and we get a plethora of weapons i think that it's cool like in el mariachi my man is only pretty much got the one gun you know mm-hmm. the uzi with the silencer going on and then at the end he uses the little uh, 38 special 
My man's got a whole guitar case full yeah, of guns. Yeah, yeah. He's been getting busy, he man. He's using them <laughs> in the best way possible. Yeah. I mean, like when he's cleaning out the bar, dog, it's it's poetic watching mm-hmm. him. I mean, it's like he's dancing when he jumps up and he's flinging the guns, wow, 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 yeah. shooting behind, shooting in front, shooting over, kicking people in the air to shoot them. Yeah, that's I mean, a little goofy, though. I mean, like, it, that, it, that's how I say it feels like hyper realism because it, it plays he, like he a dream. This guy and this guy flies like like five feet in the air yeah. and flying back and he's it, well, but it's, beautiful. I mean, it's beautiful to it look shows at, the mariachi walks everywhere <laughs> so he crazy. probably got strong legs <laughs> <laughs> but, it's crazy but, man i mean it's but crazy, the, yeah the bro. gunplay is just so awesome but then also like you got other scenes where you can tell that they did the best with the budget restraints like the part where um they walk away after um they burn down um Carolina's uh, li- uh, what's it? Yeah, the library, and they mm-hmm. jump over the building. And he drops the two bombs into the alleyway, and Tony Banderas said that I mean they pretty much had to. That this was before CG, so they mm-hmm. had to light that alleyway on fire. And if you watch the scene as the fire is exploding, they kind of both kind of wince a little bit. He said mm-hmm. that they really did that, and that. When that scene was done, all you could smell was burnt hair from everyone, from <laughs> yeah, his hair, Salma's it. hair, the, the, the crew members, oh, because that God. fire was just, it's I mean, blazing. it was just blazing everywhere. It was just heat mm-hmm. everywhere. And um, even with them, get how they jumped across the building, dude, that was not, there was no specialist there, no mm-hmm. like movie crane work. This they, they got a construction worker that was using a construction <laughs> crane <laughs> to pull them across. He yeah. said the first time he went, he smacked his head into the building. Like He, he was oh, like, dog, God. I was doing things on this film that I would never do again ever in my life. Yeah. And then you know this, I, mean? I forgot if this is the one also where they... Um, where he hits the bus, like that's or is that I might be thinking that might be my mariachi. Like like where he comes out there's like a rope and he's sliding across. Oh no, that's that's mariachi. That's yeah, 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 yeah. My bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but, but they I mean, kind of recreated that though in Once Upon a Time in Mexico they did. in that dream sequence yes. when with um him and um Salma, like yeah, yes. Yeah. And speaking of the dream sequence, I did like the attention to detail in this with providing us with the dream sequence in the beginning, showing Antonio Banderas um holding the same woman from mariachi Mm -hmm. moco shooting him in the hand to clear up the confusion because when we do see campa we're like Mm -hmm. whoa that's that's the original mariachi so it 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 helped with the transition of saying okay now banderas is actually the mariachi (laughs) and campa is campa his Mm -hmm. friend you know and speaking of 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 the weapons i mean it is just genius to have the the, the two bandmates come in. I mean, yeah. one has yeah, two, that, that was cool, man. two uh, fully <laughs> automatic uh, yeah. guitar cases. The other one, a uh, rocket launcher. Yeah, for crying yeah. out loud. That, did he hit the... Um, he hit the <laughs> and he hit the little, like, pose. With the leg out. Yeah, yeah. Leg out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it's madness, How man. many rockets can one guitar yeah, case yeah, hold? Madness, <laughs> this is like some John Wick kind of shit. It this, is. this is like John Wick it Mexico. Yes. There, there's a little branch of uh, mariachi assassin. That that's the um you know what I'm saying the Mexico but but you know it's interesting I think they actually filmed this in Texas though right really? or I don't know I'm just asking because because uh, I, I, I feel I, like it could have been a border that. town or maybe Austin I wouldn't be surprised I wouldn't be surprised because that's his home area man he's an Austin guy man okay. so, so there's a lot of blending of that cultures there in um Austin you know Mexico I, yeah I could see that but, I mean because the tone is there the setting I mean it it feels. Like, you know what I'm saying? You are in a pocket town in Mexico. I know with the the the, the, the bar scene, so, that's um, an actual bar yeah. in, in Mexico. And you can actually go there. It's a lot bigger. And, of course, it's cleaner. And they, they said that you can go there. And uh, it, it's like walking into the set of, of the movie. So, interestingly enough, this was actually filmed. Uh, principal photography took place entirely in Ciudad Acuna, Mexico, across from Del Rio, Texas. So, okay. that's, so that's interesting. Um all right, so right it on looks the cusp. Yeah, yeah, right on the cusp. But you know, and another thing that helps these these action scenes out is the way this film was shot. I mean, it's like I said, it's poetry in motion almost. You know what I'm saying? The, the camera work is just it's beautiful. You know what I'm saying? And the way that it just enhances um, what we're seeing in the action scenes because this is this is a movie that is led by the action scenes, not the story. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, like, and it's it's sad, but. You know, I understand to an extent when this film when this film first came out, the critics were kind of it was a give and take. Like they loved it for the visual aesthetic and the action scenes, but kind of ripped on it because of the lack of story building 
But it's in a fine, film, man. In a film fine, like bro. this, I mean, it's a testosterone driven movie. It's an action flick. Yeah. It's, 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 I don't want to say it's a dude flick because women can find enjoyment in this as well. I watched this with my daughter for her first yeah, time. Yeah, I mean, Antonio Banderas was, was the dude, yeah, bro. That's what, what I'm saying. With so, that, like, like it's, he, he was. Yeah. And, and also, be, because, <laughs> because this is a sequel, like you said, when, when it comes to, you know, mariachi, you know, you watch that to see. The backstory, the backlog of why this guy is doing what he's doing. You know what I'm saying? This is now, you know, showing now that now that he's gotten to this point, you know, what he's doing from that point on yeah. is to try to take out the the bad entities that have but, but, ruined but, his but life. It, it, it points to like even back then, like like one of the things I really hate is just film criticism, man. Yes. Modern, especially like someone who would look at a film like this because it is action oriented and totally dismiss it yes. because of that D- ignoring all the other great filmmaking that's taking place in this thing and i'm right. like bro like like shut the fuck up like fuck your fellini and yes. all your, your other directors you dick ride like like yo this is exactly. this is cinema too man exactly. like come on bro like, and the story gives just enough. <laughs> like, the story is the platform, <laughs> and the action is is, is springboards mm-hmm. off that. Like you know, I didn't watch this movie ever, never once, yeah. and was confused about what was Man. going on, or as to why he was doing what he was doing. It all, but also you could go and and look on something like Amazon Prime and see hundreds of terrible action movies that don't yes. hold a candle to this because, it, and like I don't I don't begrudge a film if the premise is simple. That that's right. not enough to to, to no. make me think the film is inferior. No. You still got to execute the film. And yes. I think the execution of this thing puts this thing up there in the top, yo. It puts Absolutely. it up there as a, as, a, as a great film, dude. The like, acting is great. The action is great. The way it is filmed, the way it's shot, the setting. I mean, yeah. everything that we get from it and the story. Like it I shows said, you it, new things. Yes. Like, yes, who it has, is inventive <laughs> in, in many ways. Mm-hmm. Like, And the story, like I said, it's not like there's no story at all. Mm-hmm. It's not silent. You know what I'm saying? It's, we're not watching a Chaplin movie here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like you, you still get enough. Like you, you, like like I said, you know full and well what is going on mm-hmm. and why it's going on the whole time from beginning yeah, to man. end. And on that note, there's even a cool plot twist at the end. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? When you find out, you know what's what's really going on with with Bucho and and, man, and El Mariachi. They smoked Tarantino, bro. And, they and, did. And, and, he didn't and, even know what was going on, and they and, smoked and, him in a shitty stall yeah, too. And, and who, 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 who hasn't wanted to see that at one point in time? <laughs> Like, I love his films and all, but he's kind of a jerk. You know what I'm saying? Smoke <laughs> like, the jerk. Like, like, come on, man. Like, what, what do you want? What do you Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? <laughs> exactly. I'm highly entertained watching this, man. Yes. I might even go in and get Once Upon a Mexico uh, in t- this evening, because that is another aspect of this film. And, and man, speaking of which, it, it's like you got to recognize what this thing is, man. Yes. It's, it's an old to Westerns. But it we is. got this thing set in, in a different time. There's no horses, you know, there's, there's no cowboys, but but we're still focused on some of the same things, man. Yes. Just what, like I said, it's a neo uh, western um, new twist on this thing, man. Yes. And you're, you're you're blending a lot of genres together. You're blending a lot of um, um, film elements that were buzzing at the time. Like like John Woo made this shooting hitman stuff yes. crazy. So yes, he, he throw this stuff in Mexico. He's remixing it. This, this gangster stuff that was also hot. We had Goodfellas coming out of that yes. time. Get Casino. All, all the and, yeah, it's, you know it's a lot of things that 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 Robert Rodriguez blended in. Yes. and it came out as a good um, final dish. And this in my actually opinion. like this really pushed him through the door in the mainstream mm-hmm. you know like seeing this movie a lot of people that saw this saw this before they saw mariachi like this so much was like yo mm-hmm. i need to i need to go check out mariachi you know what i'm saying and was patiently waiting for once upon a time in mexico to come out you know what i'm saying because this one was that good they're like yo I'm, this needs a sequel as well you yeah, know what i'm saying it, it was, this was probably like his second film i think um i believe so like second uh Solo film, yeah, yeah because, but 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 this guy, him and, him and Quentin, you, you look at his run yeah. out the gate, man, and it's crazy. We got, um, we got, man, dude, honestly, we got, um, oh no, look, Dust Till Dawn came out the year after this, yeah, so so he got El Mariachi, Desperado, Dust Till Dawn, and The Faculty. That's four in a row, in my opinion. Bang, bang, five. If you count Spy Kids, people love that film. Yep. I haven't really um seen that. Um, Spy it's pretty, Kids pretty too. but that shows range. Three. My yeah. man can make this film and then turn around and make a, a film then, for the, then the for the Once kids. Upon in Mexico. 
Um, Sin City, come on, son. Yeah, yeah. Come on, yeah, son. Yeah, yeah. Come on, son. You know, it may, may, maybe. Um, and then know. even that one Grindhouse one. Yeah, that he Death did. Proof was great. Death Proof, bro. Yeah. Like, come no, on. no, no, no. My bad. He did Planet Terror. Yeah. This guy, like, like he, I don't for for filmography. We looking at it straight. This guy probably he yo he's probably had one of the best opening runs, bro. Like yeah. you know what I'm and saying. And then didn't he do he did uh he did Machete too. Yeah, one Machete, and two. Um, just not uh, not too long ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Spy Kids are a mixed bag. I think the first one is great, but then you know then we get Shark Girl and Lava Boy. But but that's yeah. not I'm not that target audience for that. Yeah. But but you look at the big things that he did. Um, they were great. I didn't like Sin City two that much. Really. No. But Elite Battle Angel was badass, bro. But dude, <laughs> but Sin City One, that's that's one of my top twenties, man. I love that. And that one helped resurrect careers. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Especially for one Mickey Rourke. Mm-hmm. You know, know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, and I mean when it comes to action, I mean, he brings it. He brings it the way his 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 visual eye, like the way he directs the films, and and the, the the amount of energy and effort he puts into what we are going to see translated on the screen is. I mean, there's a reason why he's doing this and doing it so well. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Dude. It's here, man. Like like I said, man. Like one of the this is one of the few physical media's I highly recommend yes. because I'm not that big. I'm, I'm buying mostly digital now, but. But you get so much when you buy his physical um, yes. um, DVD collection or whatever. Like, especially the director's commentary is just so amazing and insightful. Especially if you have filmmaking aspirations and the um, film school. I don't know if people have put those on YouTube, but those are dope too. And he usually has a dope recipe in them joints too, man. There's a cooking segment in the in the extras that I, that I might look and go back and revisit where he and cooks. You know, a we love to eat like, now. Like, yeah. So <laughs> like, like 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 this guy gives you so much, man. Like I remember just. Just watching that like just and i would go through the extras i, I still got my dust so dawn um dvd with full tilt boogie which mm. is a documentary that came with that this this full length and it wow. just shows them making dust so dawn him and tarantino of the struggle they had to get their crew um health care mm. and, and just cool stuff that you wouldn't get man right. but, but like i said the 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 meat and potatoes of those is the commentary in the film school because it shows you how he achieved some of his results on a budget, man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I mean, and speaking of the budget, even though this was made off of a 7 mil box office worldwide, they pulled back 58 mil, but oh, then great. also it has a cult following. Yeah, they DVDs they, they turned over seen. on DVDs and, and you know, Blu-ray sales, mm-hmm. the rentals, everything like that. You know, some people were late to the party, but this is a party. Once you go to it once, you want to go back to it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I have never not enjoyed this film. I've watched it, like I said, well over 30 times, and I, I will continue to watch it many more times you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying it's just it's that enjoyable and every time it hits like the first time i mean yeah. you might know what's going to happen as far as the action sequences but that doesn't matter you still want to see it again yeah. you know what i'm saying i mean this is it's so beautifully done mm-hmm. that yeah, you know right. what i'm saying like you cannot you cannot find a way a, a reason to, to 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 discredit that nah man it's beautiful man it's beautiful man so I recommend, highly recommend Desperado, man. Check it out. Uh, you know, if you haven't seen it, uh, watch it again, man. Just to get the refresher course in there, man. And it's a banger, man. Just a it great is. testament to someone who really cares about what they're doing, man. Yeah, you know? man. Oh, also, little, 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 little fact of life: the song in the beginning that Antonio Banderas plays, he's actually really playing the guitar and singing that mm, song. That's the ah yeah 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 ah yeah yeah yeah. Um, he's doing um, shout that. out to Action Bronson because he rapped over that man. <laughs> yes, he it, did. It's, it's a weird <laughs> song because I think he's kind of paying homage to his um his kitchen crew at the time, which is uh people don't know, man, Mexicans. Um, you know, South American cooks run the restaurant game, bro. Damn near everywhere, yo. If you go to even a um, uh, Thai spot, bro, there's a good chance the cooks in that joint are Mexican, man. Mm-hmm. So the, the song is crazy. It's like he said something. Uh, shout out to my people. <laughs> they work in the kitchen with me. Like, because that's, that's how he came up. He was a, he was he a was cook, cook, you know, yeah. working in his dad's yeah. restaurant. And, yeah. and, and it's crazy, man. But, but yeah, man, that, that, that I didn't recognize that till later. I heard the song and I'm just like, yo, this is crazy. Then one day I rewatched this. I said, like, oh shit, that's where yeah. Bronson got that from, yo. Like, well, dog, I crazy. mean, you see, I, I love it. I am not bilingual in any way, shape, nah. or form, but I have it seen this good. movie enough that I know that the, the song. Rhythm, you, you, I know the, the rhythm, song. It, it, I can sing the song. Like rhythm, <laughs> it, rhythm is universal. It's yes, melody. it is. It's like yes, it is. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and you, know, you just want to groove. You want to groove. <laughs> yeah. Yes, man. <laughs> it's, it's just dope, man. Yeah. All right, folks, man. I think we can get out of here, man. Make sure you check us out um, on the next episode. Subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends about us, man. We're going to be back, man. We got more in store for you. Check us out at Classes of Cinematics on Instagram. And you can follow me at Monkey Blood on Twitter and Instagram. And this is Bobby Blockbuster. You can catch me on the next show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. We out of here. <laughs>